Hi everybody, this is Frank with Tiny Plastic Spacemen, here to show you um, the Forge World Guide to Building Resin Model Kits. Uh, this is also um, a general video on resin model preparation. Um, I might do a part two, um, but uh, for now this is uh, just going to follow this guide along. So um, in case you're not aware, this pamphlet or leaflet flyer, whatever you want to call it, has been included with uh, all the latest Forge World vehicle and large models from probably about the beginning of 2016. Um, so um, starting in I think February or so. Uh, so if you have a, a, a Forge World kit from before then, you may not have this or you may not have gotten it. Um, but just in case, uh, I, you know you don't have it or you've lost it you know here's a handy little guide so first of all it starts off with uh, just a, a packing check and the date uh, the the kit was prepared for you now uh, you may have noticed there's a bunch of things here <laughs> that are kind of off screen my tables not actually not big enough to have them all off screen so um, kind of get a little teaser of some of the stuff that's around um, but basically um, the first thing that it walks you through is that um, these aren't um, plastic kits, basically. Uh, resin models are fairly specialized, and I've seen a lot of people complain um, about the Forge World models. Um, you know, they might have a, a slight miscast, or, um, you know, the people are baffled when the glue they're using doesn't work or they're just hard to work with the models themselves um, and I think there's a there's a big misconception about um, the resin models I think Forge World in the last year or so obviously uh, since the Horus Heresy stuff has really 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 kicked off um, more and more people are getting the resin models and that means that um, there's kind of a mismatch of people getting the models and people who know how to work with the models. Now I'm not, I haven't built a million Forge World models, um, I've built uh, a, a few, um, but there does seem to be, uh, like I said, uh, uh, sort of a gap in knowledge of people who get the models and expect them to be just like the plastic models and they are not, they're definitely not. Um, so the first thing that it goes through is if that will read properly um, we've got uh, various tools that they suggest you get and have now these are go far beyond the simple uh, clippers knife and um, scraper uh, that you need for plastic models and also plastic glue you can't use plastic glue with resin models um, and then there is a preparation um, cleaning, cutting off the casting gates, cleaning mold lines, shimming, and fixing warped parts. Yes, you do get warped parts with resin models, and Forge World addressed that. Um, and then, of course, there is assembly, and then priming and painting. So, the first bit of this video is just going to go through the tools, and there's a lot of tools um, that you could get, um, and I'll try to talk about... Um, whether they are necessary or not. Well, I mean, uh, not whether they're necessary or not. Um, how useful they are, I should say, if you're just getting into resin models. Um, so the first thing that I've got here, um, scissors, you don't really need scissors. Um, if you do get a resin model and it just comes in a sealed bag, it they're handy. Better than using a knife to just slash open a bag. Um, so, got scissors if you have them, if you need them. Clippers. Now I couldn't find my cheap pair of clippers. Um, I suppose in this box here I've got sort of a cheap pair of clippers, but these are mostly for uh, my paper clips. 
but these are just basic side cutters that just cheap side cutters um, you can see I've used them for green stuff um, these I upgraded to these a while back these are Zuron um, uh, expensive hobby level uh, clippers but they're very very good um, so clippers you need clippers um, modeling knife this is not a modeling knife this is a general purpose cutting things open blade um, these are just basic snap-off blade a little safety thing that doesn't really work all that great um, you can get these uh, you can get big ones you can get little ones um, here's another one neither of these are hobby knives right so this is <laughs> these are just from DIY shops um, and some things you can get from DIY shops are fine uh, these aren't really I mean if you have something that you think you need to cut with this that's plastic you need a different tool okay so we'll just set those aside and never ever mention them again this is a hobby knife this is uh, an exacto handle um, it's rubber it's nice and comfy it's fitted with a scalpel blade um, a number 11 scalpel blade you can obviously there's if you're familiar with exacto there's a billion blades that you can get different types of blades um, I think better than this is this it's a safety a scalpel blade and it actually is designed for scalpels that's what it looks like when it's partially out um, so it sort of locks in position there if you ever need to change the blade it's there you meant to use a, a pair of pliers but you can do it if you're very careful with your fingers and then just slide on the new one so I often break these off at about there or there or they just get dull or whatever and then when you're done with it you slide it back in this thing and you're not going to hurt yourself okay so that's quite uh, those are very handy I have a couple of those sanding pads sandpaper and files um, sanding pad is something like this it's sandpaper and it's got a foam backing on it so you can put this on something and it will bend and conform as long as you don't press too hard on it um, and these are pretty good you can get them in in various um, coarse medium and fine I think this is probably a fine it's probably wearing out by this point uh, sanding pads a bit different they're a block of foam firm foam much firmer foam and these will also conform to various uh, surfaces this one is uh, double-sided it's got a very very smooth on one side and a little bit firmer on the other side I think this is 3000 and that's 2000 this is the one they use the most before painting it's got a 220 and uh, I think it's 220 on both sides and these are perfect for wet sanding um, and there's another one this one's slightly yeah this is a 240 and 1200 so I had to actually write on the on the thing themselves so I know exactly what obviously these are from Flory models uh, which is a UK company but there are a bunch of them this is another one from FlexiFile which is quite nice because uh, it's, it's small but it's got three different finishes on on, um, on one thing this is quite handy um, this is also from FlexiFile I believe pretty sure um, and this has loops of sanding paper basically as you can see so you can swap out for very coarse to very fine I don't think they get down to 2,000 or 3,000 though or as high as 2,000 or 3,000 um, but you get it all in one set or you can and this little handle here is quite nice because you can do a curved shape and obviously this is firm it's not uh, it doesn't have any give to it um, and then there's a pointy shape where you can get like under arms or you know in tight spaces and then to swap it out you just compress the handle like that and then just swap out for the next one that you want or if uh, like I said these are wet sandable um, so it's ideal to use them in wet sand uh, uh, use them with water if you can't though you can just press down and then just rotate the the sanding loop around the uh, around the handle so that's pretty nice another one and I don't this is not going to be a, a complete review of all these tools but another one this is also from FlexiFile this is pretty handy 
I got the full wax set um, just so I can have three different uh, sanding papers on the go at once. This is great for doing curved, large curved pieces or flat pieces. And basically, you say I want to sand around, say, my wrist, it curves and bends to that. So you can, so I'm not going to sand by hand, but you know, you get the idea. And this set is the three in one set. It comes with uh, three handles, so you don't have to keep swapping papers over, and then a bunch of different. Uh, different sanding papers so that's pretty cool I, I, do, I do like this I haven't used it all that much um, and in the future I'll do a sort of a, a review or something like that of these I don't think uh, wargamers are quite familiar with the flexifile name um, anyway another thing uh, that they recommend is files these are this is a very cheap set of files these are supposedly diamond dust files um, you can get them as a full set, this is uh, just a few pounds or a few dollars, and you get different shapes. The ones I use the most are the flat file. If I can find it, there. So it's literally just very flat, and it's just bar profile. And then this one, which is sort of a half moon dagger. So it's it's curved on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, but the thing is, the build quality on these aren't great, um, but you get these for uh, a fiver, or you can spend about 20 or $30 or pounds for the higher end uh, uh, versions. Um, so it's, you know, if you're just starting out, this is fine. Um, and the other thing is a variable speed rotor tool is the next thing. That is the sucker. This is the Dremel. If people talk about, I got a Dremel, this is what they're talking about. This is a cordless one, obviously. It's got a lithium polymer battery sanding stone um, bit, so you can get various bit types. Um, I think this is probably the best one, this sort of orangey tan uh, sanding stone. Don't use this one, it's just way too rough for resin or plastic. Um, and use these at a low rotating speed. And by low, I mean in the very low range. So if you're using, say, this one, you hear that? It's just above zero. These are marked in ranges of thousands. So it's 2,000 RPM. And halfway between that is 1,000 RPM. Even that is too much, I think. So you want it quite low just a few hundred RPM uh, because the reason why you don't want it too high is because you'll melt the plastic. Now the they do say that sanding resin can produce a very fine dust so wearing a dust mask is advised and we have a dust mask here. This is a proper uh, reusable dust mask um, so it's, I use this for airbrushing actually um, and yeah so you may not need something this advanced, um, but at least a good dust mask. Um, they also recommend eye protection, which is a good idea. You can get safety goggles uh, from discount shops for a dollar. They're very, very cheap and very good to use. Um, the next thing is a saw. Now, when you think saw, you might think of uh, a big wood saw or something like that. This is closer to the type that they kind of recommend. Um, ideally, you want a, a razor saw, which is this thing. This is an Exacto brand one. Uh, you can get, uh, I think Citadel do one now. It's overpriced. Just get the Exacto one. You get two blades with it, um, and you can swap them out. You can get different grades of uh, blades. So, yeah, there you go. Um, you, so you can get uh, more of a rough cut for cutting like balsa wood or something like that, or the very, very fine, which is for plastic and delicate wood. Okay. And we'll, we'll go over that in a moment. Um, tweezers. Now you can get a pack of cheap tweezers from the DIY shop or eBay DIY shop or whatever you want. This is from cheapo eBay thing. Um, these are all right. They're quite hard. Um, the better ones are 
the Tamiya tweezers. Now these are both of the tweezers that Tamiya do. As you can see that there's a, a very fine... It, the, it, it, these are just so much better built. Um, they are expensive though. Um, so again, if you're just starting out, you don't need the super expensive stuff. Get the cheap one and when you're ready or you have the budget, just go ahead and upgrade. Um, for These are useful for place, uh, placing decals or very fine bits um, on the model. Um, so pretty handy. Um, pin vise and drill bits. Now by pin vise, there's two different types. There's the old, uh, this is an old Citadel one, which is actually pretty decent. It comes with a bunch of these one millimeter bla uh, bits. Um, this is more, uh, if you're a DIY type of guy, uh, or mechanic or whatever, this is uh, more along the lines of what you might think of when you hear pin vise. I got these in a big pack of various sizes. You can see there's smaller, larger, all the way up to quite big. Um, you can get them on eBay or Amazon or whatever. The Citadel uh, pin vise has a nice rotate end. Um, obviously they've changed their pin vise now so it's uh, different and more expensive. If you can get this one, great. If not, um, these other ones will work just fine as well. Um, I like this one for using uh, for paper clips, just standard office supply paper clips. Um, but I have a whole bunch of pin vices and drill bits. Got some old drill bits. I don't really drill into plastic very well anymore, and I've got some brand new ones that are much much better. Yeah, so these these drill bits they're not expensive, um, and I do go up. I have a range of sizes because I do a lot of magnetizing. So, um, but all you need for pinning stuff is a one mil drill bit and a bunch of paper clips and a cheap pair of side cutters, or even just standard multi-purpose pliers um, like these, needle nose, and just standard cheapy no name, well, no name, <laughs> uh, pliers. Okay. Um, now then, let's see, and sculpting tools is the next thing on their list, but before we get to things like uh, epoxy putty and things like that, I'm going to say you're going to want some blue tack, or uh, if you're in the EU, maybe uhu white tack which is the same thing, poster tack basically. This lets you test fit uh, your parts together. Um, very easy um, to do and reusable. And you can also use it for paint masking, which as you can see I've done with this. Um, now sculpting tools are the next thing on their list. And sculpting tools are used with green stuff and milliput, which I'll get to in a bit. You can see there's, I think that's plaster on that one. Um, you can just cut that right off, or just scrape it off, see, quite easy. Um, yeah, so these are, again, these are really cheap ones. Um, I couldn't find my silicon ones. Um, those are a bit easier to use because they don't stick to the green stuff. These, as you're sculpting green stuff, you'll need to dip these in water regularly to uh, keep the green stuff dry and to prevent the green stuff from sticking. Uh, like it has done here, if you can see that. Okay, now the glues and modeling putties are the next section here. Um, and first thing they mention is super glue, which is obviously you can get super glue or CA glue, uh, which is short for either contact adhesive or if you're in the hobby sort of industry, uh, cyanoacrylate which is what superglue is. Um, so Zap is a good brand, Bob Smith Industries, which do rebrands uh, for if you got walk into a random model shop and you see it's uh, they have their own brand of superglue, that's Bob Smith Industries superglue. Um, one thing you do not want to do is use normal hobby glue uh, for plastics. It will not work. Just don't use this. Don't use it. You need to use super glue and if you want the glue to harden up real quick um, 
need to use Activator, which I don't have a branded thing of Activator, but Zip Kicker is, is uh, the Zap brand. Uh, Bob Smith Industries have their own uh, name for it as well. Um, I like to use the medium thickness glue. Um, you can get very thin glue, uh, or you can get the thicker gel, which takes a long, much longer to, to dry, which is why you want the, uh, the activator. Um, one thing you do not want to do is drop the super glue anywhere on your clothing because it'll wreck your clothing. And if you put it on your skin and somehow get activator on your skin, it will burn you. So be careful on that. Um, okay, and another thing that we have to mention is epoxy putty. Um, now there's a few different types. This one here is a high temp type of uh, epoxy putty. Um, you kind of chop it, mix it, and um, knead it together with your hands. Not really necessary for this, uh, what we're doing. Um, this is more along the lines of what we're looking at. Um, the uh, uh, five minute epoxy putty, or you can get it up to a half hour. Um, there's, I think for our purposes, um, we're gonna be okay with the five minute stuff. Uh, we don't really need the, 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 the 30 minute stuff. You just want to, pretty much anything um, that comes in this kind of, uh, of connector, uh, this syringe, it's like a double syringe sort of thing. Um, very, very handy to use though. Um, and you know, just follow the instructions basically, keep it capped when you're finished with it, and that should be, uh, should be good to go. A lot of people think that the five minute stuff is weaker than the 30 minute stuff. I haven't played around with it that much, but you know, uh, experiment with it. You can get the cheap stuff or the more expensive stuff. Uh, another thing that we have to look at is green stuff and milliput. Um, these are the two main sorts of uh, uh, epoxy sort of filler putties that a lot of people use. Milliput, I like. Um, one of its uh, uh, properties is that you can sand it and make sharp objects out of it. Um, and uh, this is an old, uh, I've had this for a little while. Um, I've had this for, I don't know, a few years. It's about that long. Uh, you can you can see it, it I mean, it fills the box, uh, the, those two sort of things. It's, um, I've had it for many years, so it's plenty of, of uh, stuff. Um, now, the way you work this is basically you get a knife or a, a pair of scissors. I like to use my, um, if I can find it, yeah, the, you know, a knife like this, um, just something that you're not going to care too much about. Uh, I wouldn't use my X-Acto knife or scalpel blade or anything like that, because um, you'll get just junk all over it when you want to be trimming things. Um, and basically, you just cut off roughly equal amounts, mix it together, uh, and you get a, sort of a, a pale yellow color. Um, and so we're putting this back away and just tightening it up so that no air gets uh, into the actual material. And uh, yeah, I just stuff it away basically and that's, that's it. It's uh, really easy to use. It's uh, kind of, if you've ever worked with clay, like in a, in a craft class or anything like that, it kind of feels like clay. Um, and if you wet your fingers uh, to keep it off of your, your skin, it, um, it, uh, it, it feels a lot like clay, but when it dries, it dries very, very hard. Um, and you can sand it down really, really nicely, which you cannot do with green stuff. Uh, now here, um, basically it's, it's useful for all sorts of things. A lot, you know, mechanics, uh, garden people, gardeners, whatever, use this. Um, I believe it's made in England, but you can find it pretty much anywhere. Uh, now, green stuff is uh, the stuff that tons and tons of war gamers, um, miniature modelers use. Um, one of the things that, uh, uh, I mean, you've probably used this kind of stuff before. It's a lot cheaper to get it on eBay, maybe Amazon, or from any other place other than Games Workshop. <laughs> it's so overpriced getting it from Games Workshop. But it's a convenience. If you hang out in the Games Workshop a lot, great. You know, just get it there if you want, support your store, um, but it is way, way, way cheaper uh, anywhere else. 
Uh, and basically what you do is uh, I use uh, like these my side cutters cut off a, a, a strip of it and it is kind of sticky uh, some people use oil um, they, they they coat their, uh, their their stuff in oil whether it's like all olive oil cooking oil um, I don't know about petroleum type oils like three in one or anything like that um, but you can just use water as well but you do have to keep dipping your tools and fingers in water um, now you can cut out the middle bit that's what games workshop suggests um, but you know you don't really have to um, uh, I, I usually just mix it just straight up um, and then uh, make sure I always use the wrap and then use it uh, put it back either in a Ziploc bag or something else uh, just you know another container uh, now here that this is ex uh, an example of how they show to use the green stuff now uh, the amount that I cut off is way more than you actually need there's so much more um, so you, you want to cut off, I mean, for a tiny little bit of gap filler, like they showed there, uh, you only need like almost like a pinhead size. And I nearly forgot um, a couple more things, actually three more things. Um, when you're gluing stuff, especially when you have big things, um, it helps to have these little uh, jaw vice clamps or whatever they're called, I don't know. Um, but they basically, these are just small ones I got from um, a, a small DOI shop, but they just basically act to hold things together, and they're quite, they're pretty good. I mean, obviously you can see that they're uh, putting a lot of force on these, on this box, and they just release with a little trigger mechanism. You can get a couple of these um, for pretty cheap, they're not that expensive. Um, you can get bigger ones, of course, for doing things like carpentry and, and cabinet making and that is things like that. That's where these come from. Um, but there are scale model specific ones that are much lighter weight. Uh, this is a, a metal sort of backbone. Um, you can get ones that are just all plastic. And um, there's companies out of China, I think Trumpeter and can't remember the other brands but if you go to a scale model specific website and look for their model tools uh, you'll find all sorts of amazing interesting things in there um, and eventually I'll, I'll gather some of those things um, I'm a kind of a gear freak so I like collecting that kind of stuff um, but yeah these are really good for putting together things like big tanks and aircraft and stuff like that holding blocky bits of fuselage together. Um, rubber bands are another really good thing. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, really good stuff like that that um, is very useful to have. Um, the other thing is kind of a basic thing you probably already have, uh, just fine point uh, permanent markers. Um, the ink pens I don't think will work very well. Uh, um, but just fine tip ones, not like a normal size Sharpie or uh, or their permanent marker um, a DB this is a CD DVD marker as you can see um, so they're just just basically uh, these let you make notes directly onto the model um, before you paint it for example um, to do things like say you want to put a pin here or things like something like that you know it's just handy to have uh, rather than scratching uh, a note or a mark in the model itself. Uh, another thing that might be handy, uh, maybe overkill, maybe not, is a set of cheap digital calipers. These I got for five pounds delivered on uh, on eBay. These are supposedly carbon but uh, plastic um, and I have had quite expensive ones for RC car stuff um, and these are really good for well, they can be helpful for doing things like measuring the length of the paper clips you want to use, uh, confirming the size of your drill bits, that sort of thing. Um, if you want to do uh, extra precise stuff, you can't do any worse than, than having a set of calipers. Um, and, you know, they're pretty cheap. It's something that you might want to pick up in, you know, at some point. 
Um, now the the last thing I want to mention, and I'm not this isn't going to be a, a full guide or anything like that. Um, it's basically just magnets. Um, here I have a ton of different magnets. These are three by twos. I've got six by twos. These are tiny. I can't remember. I think these are two by one. Uh, ten by two. More six by twos. Can't remember the size of these, but I've had these a long time, and I I don't really use them very often. Uh, eight by twos. Three by two, which I use a ton of. Um, and uh, these are M3, M3 stainless steel nuts, or M2, actually, they're marked right there. Um, and these are just handy to have for, well, if you do magnetizing, obviously. Um, now, you may have noticed that I have in my box of drill bits, I have all different sizes here. These, of course, magnets get everywhere. Um, and I've got like an 8 millimeter here for doing eight millimeter magnets. I can get this open quickly. So you see, there we go, and there's, you know, it's the perfect size. Um, I don't know how easy these are to get. Uh, I know in the States everyone uses standard or imperial measurements. Um, I Ever since I started doing RC car stuff, I've always done uh, metric. Um, it's the better system for me. Um, I just prefer it. It makes more sense and it works. Um, but anyway, apart from that, um, when you're doing, eventually, as you're doing a lot of modeling stuff, you build up a supply of things. So I needed some six by twos on my standard use everywhere size of magnet. Um, but I got to the point where I needed larger magnets. So I got eight millimeter, then I got 10 millimeter. So I needed eight millimeter and six millimeter uh, drill bits. Now I just removed this is my old drill bit that I had, titanium nitride coated, but it's dull now. It doesn't really work. Um, and for three pounds, or probably three dollars, it's perfect uh, to, you know, it's, it doesn't really cost all that much to, to, uh, to get another one. Um, so I've got, let's see, like I said, I've got two different one mils, which are these. Uh, one in a non-rotatory pin vise and one in the sort of handheld one, which is pretty good. Uh, and then I've got, I think that's a two and a half, and then I got a three and a four. And I think maybe that's the, uh, I think I have a couple of different fours. Uh, but anyway, you get the idea. I've got, for every size of magnet that you have, you should have the corresponding size drill bit. Uh, I don't have a 10 mil drill bit, but these are kind of just glue onto the surface anyway. And I use, usually I use, uh, um, well I use either the Milliput or the green stuff, uh, usually just super glue. Um, and at some point in the future I might do a guide on, on, uh, on magnetizing stuff, um, but I just wanted to make sure that this the magnets were included in the in this sort of tool guide, uh, so to speak. So yeah, there's my magnet box, and then I always have usually this lives in there, and this as well. So I probably need to replace it <laughs> with something a bit more sturdy, but that works. This just lives next to me on the desk. Right, so we're going to look at uh, one of the uh, early steps of, uh, of model prep, uh, which is going to be a future video that we're going to, um, like, I, like I mentioned, uh, we're just going to grab a kit here. And, uh, of course, washing is going to be a very important thing that we're going to do. Uh, hot, well, warm, soapy water and just an old toothbrush is uh, 
which you want to get that uh, spray wax or oil or whatever some, the mold release stuff that's uh, that is uh, on pretty much all the all the pieces that you get from Forge World. Um, scrub it really good, um, and then we're going to work on removing uh, the casting gates, which is the second step. You don't want to. It's a casting gate there. You don't want to snap it off like that. Uh, you want to get your tools, basically, that we just went over, uh, such as this razor saw, and cut it really close to the model. And just as close as you can get. Not perfectly flush, although you can get pretty close, because uh, it is a razor saw. Um, you want to be about a millimeter away, which is like two playing cards, or like the thickness of uh, just a, a backing card. And then we're going to get uh, the knife. Um, just looking for the knife here. There we are. Um, it's been safely put away. And uh, uh, just basically just trim that uh, the nubs that are left after the hobby saw, after the razor saw. Take that off. Um, and the cool thing is this uh, casting gate is a huge bit of plastic. You can use that for scenery. You can use it for tank traps or barriers, something like that. Or you can drill holes in it and mount your infantry in it for uh, while you paint um, makes a nice heavy base um, the next thing we're going to do is look for any flaws that are on the model um, you can see there's kind of a, like a mold line it's a two-piece mold so it's a bit of a mold line there basically just get your knife or your sanding stick like we've got here and just just take that down you can kind of see it uh, you got to look pretty close um, and and a lot of people you know you know happy to to uh, just go ahead and just build the model as is. Um, the next thing we're going to do is look for uh, what they call shims, which are the very, very thin, almost um, flash material, flashing material, uh, that's between some of the small parts. It's usually between cables and ropes and things like that. Um, you would normally see it in between pieces like these here. Um, and you could feel the oil uh, on all the pieces, um, which is a good thing. Uh, you know, that's what helps uh, keep the mold models uh, bubble free. Um, and, you know, just uh, make sure that we get, we give everything a good wipe and a clean and uh, make sure there's no water on it before we start going. Um, because if there is any, any water or residue left on there, uh, it's not going to, the paint's not going to stick basically, even when you prime it properly. Uh, in a future video, we're going to be looking at um, things like um, straightening uh, with hot water. Uh, you can see here there's a bit of it's only, it really only affects uh, the hot uh, the uh, thin pieces like this wing here. Um, but yeah, it's it's not a huge problem. And now uh, what you're going to do is uh, clip that very closely. Use the hobby saw to take off most of the rest of that piece. Use your knife to trim away the piece that's left by the razor saw, and then get your sanding stick and uh, take that down. And then again, you can use that casting gate for for an extra. Bit. So that is about it for uh, this first video. Um, and working with resin, please give us a like, a thumbs up, a comment. Uh, find us on Facebook. Find us on the web, uh, tinyplasticspaceman.com. On Facebook, just search for Tiny Plastic Spaceman. Uh, we hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, if it has, uh, please share it and give us a like. Thanks very much, and we'll see you later.